<laughs> na 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 la vika after midnight e doli leko <laughs> no no i mean it's not like me just <laughs> i mean kula tanta mina fiwe we ya chipa for what para sta ko ya dola eh i mean that's my level <laughs> now Let's talk about the increment with regards to the price of fuel. A lot of Zambians are furious. Obviously, the cost of living is probably going to increase as well. So what is your reaction as a Zambian youth and uh, basically as somebody who's got a whole lot of bills to pay? <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, talk on social media, people regretting to have voted for um, the New Dawn government and other people. Really? Well. People some people regretting. some people you know i don't know if they voted for them or not but you know the but the tug of war between the 2.8 and the 1.8 so that's on social media the ho the opposition has gone in full effect saying they've now increased fuel by four kwacha it's now trading about 26 kwacha and uh everyone is expecting the worst to happen in terms of uh, skyrocketing commodity prices and uh, personally my opinion is we knew this was coming you know we, we knew this was coming this was inevitable and uh what we can only do is work hard and hope our leaders provide a better a better solution or a solution a viable solution that will help cushion uh you know uh the poor man's uh day-to-day -day expenditure instead of you know uh them uh, not not being able to access certain commodities because of the perceived uh, uh skyrocketing of uh, commodity prices right so obviously there's a lot to decipher mm -hmm. for, uh, with regards to what you say but first of all let's start with the with the basics social media because there's a lot of propaganda right now which is uh you know currently going on and we know mm -hmm. we, we all know who controls a lot of uh, you know popular social media blogs so uh a long time ago there was always a discussion or rather an argument between background and reality so mm -hmm. obviously if you look at the 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 you know the the the, the popular notion on social media is uh you know these guys probably don't really know what's happening you guys uh you were promising to save us and you had so many solutions but take a look at what's happening we were better off uh, you know with what was happening in the past so that is the perceived social media propaganda but when it comes to reality I really believe, uh, believe a lot of Zambians are sort of understanding uh, with regards to why we are, um, you know, having such uh, sort of uh, outcomes with regards to the price. So uh, the general consensus of Zambians is uh, we are understanding. This is one of the reasons why, obviously, in the past, uh, the previous regimes were able to like push the buttons. You know, so right now we understand. Obviously russia ukraine everything mm -hmm. is affected if, in most countries right now if you look at most developed countries they are also facing the same, same. problem so mm -hmm. this particular problem is not just peculiar uh, to zambia this is obviously worldwide mm -hmm. you know so if you look at uh, uh, the economical standpoint of zambia with regards to production we do not really produce a lot of stuff we are mm -hmm. basically an import dependent uh, type of country so obviously whatever happens that side it is going to affect us so uh mm. my question uh, or rather let me just uh quote the wise words of uh, pilato because pilato did really uh you know write a very profound uh, uh article with regards to what he thinks about this whole solution so quite a right right we understand the price of fuel is skyrocketing mm -hmm. but what is the solutions or rather what are the solutions because the there's quite a number of solutions and right now the ministry of energy hasn't really given us those profound takeaway mm -hmm. points that we need to sort of uh, you know sleep on and just uh, basically get to meditate on for example there's always alternatives to you know fuel uh for example uh electric uh, energy could be utilized mm -hmm. you know electricity and uh, if i if i'm not mistaken president haka in the hitchlema not so long ago went to congo to discuss the probability of or rather the possibility of opening up uh you know electric vehicle factories because you know uh, uh the drc produces uh, a lot of uh, you know cobalt even zambia has got a lot of cobalt so obviously 
gravitating towards alternative forms of you know energy would be a solution so such types of narratives need to be put out there yeah, but the thing is the thing is for that to happen i don't see that happening now so maybe we can start those few steps to change the type of energy that we use uh, or the popular energy which is fuel mostly in our vehicles you know and some of the other day-to-day activities that uh, we do even when you look at the united states yes right. tesla is doing okay and there are other companies as well that are doing uh, that are making electric vehicles but it's not as popular as exactly yeah know, so it's, it's the, there's for us to have that shift that's not that's a long-term solution yeah, it's, it's a long-term a solution m- my main uh point was mm-hmm. we need to talk about the solutions as well just like mm-hmm. pilato you know uh very well wrote in his article on his facebook page right we are supposed to hear uh the the solutions that mm-hmm. they are coming up with yes everybody knows like it's a, it's a no-brainer you don't need to be a rocket scientist mm-hmm. for you to know that, okay it, 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 it is inevitable mm-hmm. you know for the prices to kind of go up but so what you know what are we doing about it that's the type of uh, those are the types of discussions we are supposed to be having and uh, let's say for example the ministry of energy is sort of uh, being proactive with regards to you know seeking these solutions you know that really soothes our souls as zambians you know so uh, first, we need uh, that uh, i'm sorry to cut you short i feel like there's a whole lot of information that needs to be given firstly zambians do not understand the monthly price reviews yeah what's why that are we doing the monthly pricely uh, price reviews <laughs> is it because of know? the subsidies that were that uh, were removed, removed and yeah. we're constantly whenever we buy fuel yeah. the prices are constantly changing so meaning every month we have to change so yeah. is it a, a suitable form of uh, you know is it a viable uh, solution, a viable solution with regards to, with regards the to actually f- uh, the, the actual fair value of the price of fuel so this is going to become redundant in the next uh, excuse me in the next coming few months because everybody is going to be not looking forward to the end of the month because you know that obviously there's going to be a lot of chaos by yeah. the end of the month because of these some uh, you know fuel adjustments yeah, because th- they bring a lot of questions are we buying fuel every month are we buying fuel every day and the type of fuel that we're getting or the quantity of fuel that we're getting every month is it fuel that say you know the minister is thinking or whoever is procuring this fuel uh, this oil is thinking oh okay this will last for two three months because now it seems like uh we only buy uh oil that's just you know valid for a month a because meaning time. every time since we're adjusting prices uh, meaning every time every month we're buying exactly so this is one of the reasons why the procurement process needs to be sort of uh, explained so that the people of zambia know exactly what is happening okay so we do understand there's a lot of uh, you know moving pieces here and there but if there was uh, some sort of a uh, great effort with regards to explaining the whole procurement process with regards to the prices you know the companies involved and how much quantity is being purchased or rather pro you know uh, procured, procured that would mm-hmm. sort of uh, help us understand let's say for example we've got uh you know fuel that was bought and procured for the next four months why the hell why? are we uh, you know getting to adjust Just. so whatever amount of fuel that we are obtaining or rather purchasing is it only lasting for a month or so so we need answers we need to understand and speaking about you know this whole uh, fuel adjustment uh, every month right i really believe uh, it's, it's really going to be an easy case uh, mm-hmm. for the opposition to sort of uh, you know create a narrative because you already know what's going to happen by the end of the month there's going to be tempers there's going to be you know people feeling some type of way because obviously this gets to affect the broader economy when the prices go up inevitably everything goes up even you know cutting your hair at the barber shop is going to go up so everybody's lives are definitely going to be affected so this is not really you know child's play this is serious stuff and just to breathe fire on the upnd right mm-hmm. in opposition right president haka in the hichilema had so many solutions right now he's actually at the helm uh, of uh, getting to lead zambia so where are those solutions and this is one of the reasons why to some extent i do understand where the majority of the opposition political parties are coming from because you know he was very vocal and he really made it look easy but we need those solutions even if we don't we can't really get 90 percent 
type of uh, reversal outcomes or solutions, right? At least we have to be able to see some sustainable progress with regards to maintaining the low prices. Because uh, mm-hmm. if you look at the procurement of, um, you know, uh, well, the procurement uh, supply chain, if I can put it that way, right? Mm-hmm. With regards to corruption, right? Uh, President Haka in the Hichilema has been very vocal with regards to sealing the loopholes and the gaps, uh, you know, that, are there for the gaps mm-hmm. that are there for corruption to sort of take place. So if this is being efficiently done, right? Obviously, there's going to be some sort of sustainability. But I do understand so my point is I'm just trying to be neutral I do mm-hmm. uh, understand and I see from both well, sides well for me I'm, I'm feeling for the president in the sense that is it going to take the president to do what he did uh, uh, you know when he uh, went to the ministry of health uh, and worked there together with the minister to ensure that things move smoothly so is he going to now do or should he do that to every ministry because it seems like the ministers are really not helping you know the president uh, and uh, it's just showing a lot of uh, you know uh, it's becoming to seem like it's a one man's show because we don't yeah. really understand what right. is happening and when uh, uh, you know decisions are made yes we understand we understand uh, we were told that the previous government the pf government did leave a huge date uh, in terms of uh, oil there were uh, payments that were not financed so obviously we do have that date to dismantle but how are we doing that i feel like it's a matter of explaining and telling the people zambians voted and the other thing is that when we voted We think that we now started afresh. We didn't have any problems. The UPND government didn't carry on. The the problems were carried over. And these problems need to be solved. But how these problems are being solved is what the Zambian people do not understand. And this is why we need effective communication because now... I mean, the schools that were built, you know, the, the ECLs built schools, the Mwanawasa's sustained, uh, you know, schools, the Arabis uh, and the Kaundas, and now people are educated, uh, people are understanding uh, what is happening in terms of governance. Uh, and, right. you know, uh, I was reading a post from uh, Comrade uh, Anthony Walia, who is uh, the presidential uh, spokesperson, uh, where he was talking about the inflation just after the increase of, uh, you know, the prices, the fuel prices. So he was talking about how inflation uh, uh, rate has uh, uh, dramatically reduced, reduced you know, so right now, and, yeah. and, and it's being sustained. And then he went on to mention that uh, um, prices, commodity prices are rising slower than in the previous regime you know people don't understand that we don't okay inflation is low right why are the prices still going up you when you say slower you know people are expecting okay uh, prices will reduce you know and looking at how our past whenever prices go up things do not come down transport fares don't come back down you know and this is what people are afraid of once the prices go up it's going to be chaos <laughs> no point of returning no so, point of returning so solutions should just like uh, you know comrade pilato said uh, solutions should be told to the public the uh, energy minister should let us know okay guys the challenges are a b c and d so this monthly uh, uh, you know review is actually helping us raise money to dismantle debt raise money to find a better supplier of uh, you know oil because at the end of the day we also have to talk about the big elephant in the room the elephant in the room where do we get our oil you know and looking at what is happening on the world stage russia you know uh with ukraine what are we going to do? what are we going to do russia produces 40 percent we voted against russia's actions towards ukraine so where are we going to be getting our uh, yeah. you By know the way that's another topic of discussion <laughs> so you know uh, I, I think uh president uh, vladimir putin said uh, is it unfriendly countries are going to be able to like purchase uh, you know natural gas and mm-hmm. all those oh, yes. uh you know uh commodities from russia uh in in rubles Ruble. so zambia voting <laughs> is it again against yeah that, that, ukraine's action yeah, exactly. Oh, so Russia's action rather towards in Ukraine. Exactly. Towards Ukraine. Does, does that get to affect us? If so, how? So these are the types of conversations that we are supposed to be mm-hmm. having with regards to 
being proactive because you raised a very profound point with regards to uh, this being a one man's show. You know, mm-hmm. Bali alone cannot do it. Cannot. As much as he is, uh, you know, this uh, great entrepreneur, very great businessman, he cannot do it alone. The whole team needs to be top notch, A1, everybody needs to play their role. So this is one of the reasons why, just like you said, right, we do not have consistent and effective communication. And this is where the lacunas are coming in. And this is one of the reasons why there is probably going to be miss information in the future but anyway unless you've got other points okay, uh, um, i want to raise uh, something that uh, uh, uh the vice president did mention in parliament today she was asked if zambia is going to procure uh, oil and that it might be cheaper actually procuring from angola which is you know an african country not closer too far to closer us. to us uh, and they produce you know some good oil she said the type of oil that angola is producing uh we cannot process we cannot refine in zambia because one in is on care and maintenance the- why the hell is in <laughs> on care and maintenance you understand so these are the types of conversations that we are supposed to be having if indeni is on care and maintenance right revamp it what the hell are you doing we've got cheaper oil uh, you know like closer to us angola and if we are procuring the oil whatever whatever is needed from angola right if it's done in angola and brought to zambia it's going to be le- cheaper, cheaper because you know the, the the transportation costs are going to be less less so let's invest in revamping in Den- I don't really care how much uh, it costs because it's much more efficient procuring from a closer neighbor of ours, provided we can process this particular type of oil. Come on. Yeah, so it was quite disappointing. It was quite disappointing hearing, you know, the vice president say we don't have processing plants that can process the type of uh, uh, oil that is coming from, uh, uh, you know, Angola. Now, imagine if we had three, four Indenis that were properly functioning with updated technology and, you know, we were the uh, only country in Africa or rather in the southern region that's able to process that oil we would be selling it off to uh, other countries that Definitely. are nearby so that's another source of income as well so why are we not looking at that and then we just want the finished product and we just exactly. come and put it so in our cars those are the types of solutions we need to hear so if Indeni cannot process this particular type of oil uh, so how are we going to raise that money how are we going to brainstorm and use our collective intellect to come up with that money? Uh, do we need to lobby for, uh, for investors to jump in and, you know, let's, let's do something about it. So those are the types of solutions we need to hear from our, uh, you know, respective uh, ministries and the government at large. So anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, we pass on the board to you. What do you think about this whole process, this whole uh, debacle with regards to the consistent monthly uh, reviews of the prices of fuel mm-hmm. and uh, you know the increment and you know the prices of fuel how are they going to be affecting you do you see any feasible and viable solution coming in from the new down government or perhaps you are going to give them enough time because hey they just started ruling zambia uh, seven months seven months ago so they still have time so is bali going to fix us or he's going to help us fix Zambia.